Hi, in this lecture, we're going to go over some of the examples from chapter 15, Inference and Practice. Um, so it's going to be a quick run through this thing. Uh, so a couple of examples. So if you pause and read this question, you can see that there are mu given, some values are given, sigma is given, and assumptions are made. Um, and then you have margin of error is given to you and they have asked you to calculate the number of DLMIs for 95% confidence interval when the margin of error is given to you. So we know n is z times sigma over square uh, over m, the entire square. So we just have to substitute the values. Only thing we don't know directly in this case is z, but we have been asked to calculate 95% uh, confidence interval or consider that 95% so we can consider z value for 95% confidence interval using the table so if you look at table c 95% confidence interval this is table c and go all the way till you hit the row indicating z star values that's the critical z value you can find that corresponding value is 1.96 so just substitute that value in this equation and First thing is math, so 61.47. That means you can say that you need at least 62 DRMIs to calculate 95% confidence with this much margin of error. So that's your answer. Second question is also very easy. Uh, it asks you to find the uh, errors. So statistical test at significance level 0 0.05 has power of this much so power is given to you we know alpha is also nothing but type 1 error so what are the probability of type 1 and type 2 error so everything when we discuss uh, under the uh, normal distribution curve that's the area under normal distribution curve that represents nothing but probabilities so probability of type 1 error is nothing but that alpha value we know that's the critical alpha on that tail uh, if it's a one-sided hypothesis so that's nothing but that particular alpha value that's 0 0.05 that's your type 1 error so first part is solved second is asking about type 2 errors now type 2 error we know is beta but we don't know exactly uh, the value of it we have to calculate that but we do know that power is nothing but 1 minus beta and power is given to us in this case 0 0.78 so just 1 minus 0 0.78 that's 0 0.22 that's nothing but your beta value now last question is looking at sample size and the correlation how of the other three things how is going to affect these things so if we have reasonably large sample uh, or as the sample size increases what is going to happen to these things so margin of error is going to get decreased because now we have more samples so that's one way that we actually increase um, precision as well as accuracy by keep keeping the confidence interval same right and when you have more precision more precision so this is more precise compared to something like this bigger confidence interval right because we simply have this much margin of error around one side of mean and this much mean and you can certainly see that that particular margin of error small distance is going to be comparatively very small than this margin of error right because it's broader this is narrower so we would say that or margin of error with increasing sample size or larger sample is going to go down then the second thing is p-value so p-value is going to go down as well because when we have more sample that means we have more power that means we can have evidence favoring our alternative hypothesis uh, with more power and uh, in other words we can say that probability to um, go against 
null hypothesis increases so that's why our p-value decreases mm, this is just a short explanation and last part is in regarding the impact of outlier it's also going to go down as the sample size n increases and i would like to explain it making use of the regression uh, principle but it doesn't have to be that same result you can also think of other things but for the interest of time i can explain that if this is the regression uh, plot if you consider for four different data points and if you look at one two three and four different data you can certainly see this is an outlier right but if you have four fewer points here this outlier might have relatively more influence than if you have more number of data points let's say anything more than 40 or something like that this line regression line is going to get pulled more towards this majority of data points than the outlier in other words the influence of outlier or impact of outlier is going to go down because you can see that this distance is larger than this the distance that means in this case outlier is pulling the regression line with less power versus this outlier is pulling relatively stronger right and then we are going to discuss this last question in the next video.